Okay guys, so let's talk about the lab report now. So when you go into the stream analysis folder in your Blackboard, um, you're going to see a bunch of different links here. Okay, you need to download this one, the stream analysis online directions, the biotic data, okay, the micro and macro invertebrates, and then this lab report guidelines, you'll see that there is this little link here that says guidelines for starch lab report, and you're going to click that and download it. And I'll show you that now. All right, so this is the lab uh, report guidelines. Okay, so we're gonna go through this to make sure that everybody understands. Uh, so this is where you would have been going as far as um, the, the field trip is concerned. It's uh, Starch Factory Creek at Proctor Park. And when you start writing your lab report, this is, the setup is very important. If you don't set it up correctly, how this tells you, um, you'll get points taken off. Okay, so I want you to start by putting 10 spaces. All right, so enter 10 times and then go ahead and title your page. Okay, so I don't want this to be called starch lab report or lab report or starch creek or anything like that give it a descriptive title okay go ahead and put in 10 more spaces and then go ahead and write a line okay so that you're writing over on this side and in 12 point bold font i want you to put your name the date your lab section, which you can put remote in this case, and the course title, which you can either put BI-105 or environmental science. All right, so a good rule of thumb is to, when you're thinking about writing a lab report, is to tell them you're going to tell them, tell them, tell them what you told them all right so really what that means is that um, you're going to have a lot of in, uh, introductory information right a lot of definitions you have to write this as if i know nothing about the subject okay like this is my first time reading about this topic and i want to be able to understand so for your introduction you're going to go ahead and put a header right and it's going to say introduction and you can look at page 143 of your lab manual okay about formatting okay you do want to use double space for your whole lab report okay um, if it's not double spaced if it's less than that it's really hard for me to read when i have to read um, a lot of them at a time, okay? So in your introduction, what you're doing is you're introducing the topic, okay? So you're gonna be talking about um, where the testing is taking place, uh, why it's important, and what you're going to be talking about as far as your methods and your procedures, as well as a little bit about your conclusion um, which is usually in the form of a hypothesis, right? Um, so a hypothesis, as you can see, is here. You don't have to make it a separate section. It's actually part of your introduction. All right, so a hypothesis is usually an if-then statement, right? So if I wanted to hypothesize that all dogs have tails, I would say, if it is a dog, then it would have a tail, all right? Um, maybe something, an example a little bit closer to what we're doing, I would say that if nitrate levels are below some milligrams per liter of water, then it would be uh, good for aquatic life. All right, so that's what your hypothesis is going to look like. It's usually an if-then statement. 
All right, um, this is something important. Do not use I or we statements. Okay, so in lab reports, in science, we don't say I did this or we did this. All right, so instead we could say, um, here's an example. You know, it says, don't say <clears throat> on May 5th, my environmental science uh, class, whatever. You would say, on May 5th, the environmental science class, all right, um, you do not want to use uh, those I, we, them, us pronouns, okay? Um, that's just something we, what we say is that we talk with a passive voice. All right. Um, also, this is very important. Reference everything, okay? Um, you learn this information somewhere, okay? So if it's from the lab manual, then cite the lab manual. All right, if you found information on the internet, you have to cite it, okay? Um, if not, it is plagiarism, and plagiarism um, will only get you a zero, possibly um, some negative effects from the college as well, because I have to report plagiarism. All right, um, so that means from either another classmate or from taking words directly from the internet, um, or from a video or whatever, okay? Um, I really won't, don't want to touch too much on that because I think we all know what plagiarism is and not to do it. And if actually you're not sure and you want to talk about it, definitely shoot me an email or stop into my office hours. I'd be happy to tell you if something is plagiarized or not. Okay, so next what we're going to do is we're going to have a methods and materials section. All right, so this is what's going to go underneath your introduction. All right, and this, what you're going to do is you're not going to give me, you know, bullet points of these are the things that we used, right? Um, you're going to write in sentence format what you would have done for this lab report. Um, it's good to watch the part one of the video because I actually walked down to Proctor Park and I kind of, go through really quickly some of the things that you'd be using on what you would be doing. All right. Um, and you're going to pretty much talk about if you did this lab report or if you did this, um, if, if you actually went down to Proctor Park, uh, what would you have done? Okay. How would you have measured across the stream, right? What instrument would you have used to take the temperature of the water or of the air? Okay, things like that. Now, after you get your methods and materials, oh, also um, within your methods, you got to make sure that you include the hop kits, which is something that you would take the water sample go back to the lab and test for nitrates, phosphates, and dissolved oxygen, right? So that's part of your methods and materials too. I see sometimes that students tend to leave that out of the methods because it occurs later. Okay, so then we get down to our results, okay? And you really want to put your results into a nice, neat table. I do not want you to use lined paper and take a picture of it. This is a professional lab report, so um, do your best. Make a table in either Word or um, in Excel and import it into your into your Word document for this, okay? And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have your abiotic data um, across the top here, right? So your nitrates, your flow rate, air temperature, width, okay? Um, also, it's very important, you do not want to write, you know, 1.1 milligrams per liter here, right? You don't want this milligrams per liter in each of these um, boxes here. You just want numerical data, okay? Here is where you're going to be telling what units this data is measured in, okay? So it has to be up here in your titles. All right, and then you're going to have um, your data across here. 
All right. You can you also have to make sure that you label each of um each of your tables, right? So see this example it says table one A biotic data, which that's perfectly fine. If you want to also name yours table one A biotic data, that's perfectly acceptable. Um, you'll see here table two biotic data. And remember the difference between abiotic and biotic is abiotic are not living, um, they've never lived okay it's that type of thing like a a nitrate has never it's not a living thing right it's a um it's a chemical a chemical composition um, biotic data is living data or once living okay so uh these are things like uh, bugs or planktons and things like that all right so here you have are going to have your phytoplankton your zooplankton and your benthos all right um and i want you to import okay i want you to do google and find an image of um of the specimen all right and then i also want you to uh, import a hand drawing for each one of these okay so you're gonna have a total of six pictures in your table too oh sorry guys Okay, so we get now to your discussion, all right? And this is where you're going to actually say, well, you know, based on this data that I collected, that based on this, um, you know, that it, it, this is good quality water for life or for drinking, or maybe it's not, okay? so. Um, you're going to say maybe that you found that the dissolved oxygen co concentrations at 21 degrees Celsius was 8.8. .8, all right. And based on that, does that, is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Can lots of fish live in a dissolved oxygen of 8.8 .8 or a little fish, right? Or life? All right, so those are the kind of things that you want to do in your discussion. You're, you want to reference your specific data, all right, and then you want to tell what it means, right? Why is that number important? All right, and if, if you read through this, you'll see that there is uh, quite a few good examples in here for you. All right, uh, once again, if you're not sure if you're doing one of these parts right, come to my office hours, okay? We can talk about it uh, to make sure that you are on the right track. All right, um, go into your lab manual. Uh, to pages 79 through 81, all right, because that's going to tell you where what are uh, acceptable concentrations for the nitrates, phosphates, and dissolved oxygen in order to support healthy life. Um, so this is just a bunch of different examples of how to uh, finish writing your conclusion part, okay? So again, no I statements, we statements, they statements, okay? This is not an opinion, all right? You're not going to say I think, all right? Um, because we really don't care what you think. Uh, this is science. We care about the data and what the data points to, okay? Um, so you see this is a good example of what not to say my group found a high concentration of dissolved oxygen this is really important for insects and plants living inside the stream life creatures need oxygen to survive all right so um all of this is an is an okay statement except for my group all right you can say um you know, a high concentration of dissolved oxygen was found. All right, and that gets rid of that I or we or they statements. All right, um, the last thing that I wanna say is 
that you want to read through this whole thing and make sure that you understand it okay this is 20 percent of your grade um, this stream analysis additional directions will help you a lot to uh, understand and write your lab report um, so i wanted to show you some specific things here um, so here in the procedure it gives you a bunch of different videos and everything that you can watch um, kind of for the nutrient uh, analysis using the hawk kits. Um, a lot of students have a hard time kind of conceptualizing that. Instead of making a video for you guys, there's already one here in your online stream analysis directions, okay? Um, also, um, there are some videos here for the abiotic parameters, okay? Um, so this is going to tell you about how to use a colorimeter um, as well as doing stuff for nutrient concentration and things like that, okay? Um, so that's going to give you a lot of information for your methods and procedures section okay so make sure that you watch all of these videos they are for your benefit um, again this is 20 percent of your grade so it, that's something really important now here here is your data okay um, so this is taken at point a along the stream this is where we were in the video, point B, and this one's point C. Um, so each one of these, what you're going to do when you make your table is that you're going to list each one of these, and then you're going to also give me the average, right? Um, just in case you guys don't know how to take an average, um, you're going to take A plus B plus C. Right, so 35.4, 26.7, plus 30.1, and you're going to add all of those up, and then you're going to divide by the number of data points you have, right? So in this case, it's one, two, three. All right, and that equals your average. And you can see that you have a um, the data points that are taken at all three places um, there. All right. And then we go to our, that was our abiotic data, right? The things that are not living. All right. And then here is the biotic data. So when we went to the stream, um, these are some of the things that you may have seen if you look under uh, one of the microscopes. Okay. These are some of the macro and micro invertebrates that um, have been caught in the stream in previous semesters, all right? So notice that it's kind of giving you a hint as to what size this specimen is, right? So compound microscope, stereoscopic microscope. So if you don't remember which one is for looking at smaller things and which one's for looking at larger things, go ahead and look back at your microscope lab all right and so once again those are going to be in your table too right and you're going to draw a hand drawing of these as well and then the very last thing i wanted to show you guys is that in the first um document we are just looking at which is the guidelines for starch lab report the last page is this one, and this is um, your rubric, okay? So this is how I'm going to score you and score your lab report, okay? So I want you to just um, look through this after you're done, well, while you're writing your lab report, as well as after you're done, and say, how well did I, you know, did I make a hypothesis? Um, did I give examples 
of abiotic data and not just define it. Okay, so um, this is a lot of places where students get marked off is that they could have explained, they could have defined phosphate for me, but not explained why, what it is or why it's important to um, stream analysis. Okay, so little things like that will get you a point taken off. Um, so also I do um, grade for grammar, spe spelling, and syntax. So um, I expect you to be able to at least use a spell check um, and write in appropriate grammar. All right, uh, you guys go ahead and start your lab. If you have any questions, please visit me during office hours, okay? Um, this is 20% of your lab grade. Once again, this is very important. So um, let's not wait until the last minute and definitely come in and ask me questions if you're confused. All right, see you soon.